Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about our work, um, effective data fusion with generalized vegetation index. So there's gonna be four parts of this presentation. I'm gonna first talk about the background, uh, like how we motivated to why we were motivated to um, tackle this problem, and then our approach, basically the generalized vegetation index and active group normalization. Uh, I'm going to present the result very quick and talk about the conclusion and future works. Okay, the first part. Um, so we all know when we do the computational, like uh, com com computer vision, we are tackling as the visible lights, which is uh, normally represented in RGB3 channel um, tensor. <clears throat> but this is actually just a very small piece or very small part range of the all electromagnetic magnetic spectrum. And the, the RGB values, they are not like the, the point value. They are the, in, the integral of a small region according to uh, the particular curves. So the current default, default deep learning solution to um, tackle multi-channel or multi-spectrum data is basically by adding another channel. So if we have near infrared, um, data in this case, like in the agricultural vision data set, we probably just add another channels. This is not actually what the literature suggests us to do. Um, so when we search the literature, especially the remote sensing uh, literature before the deep learning, um, people use vegetation index a lot as a feature extracted um, from the multi-sensor image to detect the vegetation, the diversity of the vegetation. So here is one example. Uh, this is the formula of NDVI, uh, one of the most popular vegetation index proposed in 1970s. Um, here we normalize the near infrared um, versus with, with the, the red channel um, because like the, the reflection of vegetations um, are largely um, is pretty sensitive in near infrared than red. So our question, uh, and, and we can see this particular, this uh, concrete example of vegetation index. So in the, in the top left image, we can see, okay, this is RGB image. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit hard to see anything um, here, right? Uh, we can see there is some vegetation here, but uh, not quite uh, in the other, other parts of the image. And here is the near infrared channel. But by just looking at the near infrared red channel, it's pretty highly correlated with the red channels. However, if we do the uh, ND, the vegetation index, uh, here we use the vegetation conditional index, we can see the pattern of some uh, weed clusters uh, and double plant. You can see like there's, there's some shadows, um, like although they are not like green in the RGB, the RGB image, we can see there are still uh, some response response. Is, is, is there still some uh, responsive value in the conditional vegetation index channel? And this is the ground truth. So you can see like the, the yellow part is actually the double plant, and the blue denotes the weed cluster. So weed cluster is pretty obvious. But in this case, you have you like we have to look at the con vegetation condition index to uh, get a sense of where is the double plant. Okay, so the general question we propose here is: Can we generalize vegetation index to benefit the downstream deep learning models? So can we leverage the 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 the, the feature extraction like feature engineer knowledge before deep learning to benefit the deep learning models? This question is actually break up into two parts. Uh, the first one is how. How can we generalize the vegetation index? And the second one is why. Because people might wondering, like if deep learning models, they have so much more capacity than previous machine learning models, can they actually extract those features by themselves? So we're going to like answer the how question first. Mm -hmm. So here we put together, um, we're looking to uh, 12 available vegetation index uh, that's defined on RGB and near infrared channel. 
um, you can see their definition uh, in the in right part. I put them in, we put them into uh, a table. And uh, in the left part, this is basically the cor correlation coefficients of all the calculated vegetation index. So we calculate the vegetation index for each pixel um, and, uh, at, uh, uh, and use the agricultural vegetation data. Do you, as, uh, and, and we calculate the, the, the correlation between different kinds of vegetation index. So as you can see, they have high, like they are to some extent highly correlated, um, but uh, not as as extreme as we saw. Like they are, there are still some negative correlation, and some correlation are pretty close to uh, to zeros. So we're thinking, well, um, this vegetation index they they do provide different perspective of uh, how to uh, how to do the feature extraction. However, if we took a look at all those definitions, you can see um, there are some kind of general form of those vegetation index, right? Basically, you did some linear transforms of uh, the three channels, possibly, possibly some of them, and you normalize them with a, a denominator, right? Uh, also, a linear transform of, of different channels. Um, so most of this vegetation index can be written out as uh, the generalized vegetation, vegetation index expression here, right? You have a linear transform of your four channels, R, G, B, and your infrared, and you normalize it with another linear transforms of those four channels. Uh, by saying normalize here, I mean uh, divided by the linear transforms of the, uh, the, the four channels. Uh, this makes us thinking, okay, if we are able to learn the parameters of deep learning, like do the feature regression, can we learn the parameter of alpha and beta, uh, which is the linear transforms of uh, those four channels. Uh, so we propose this GVI module, which is a generalized vegetation index, right? X here denotes the four channel uh, inputs or maybe multi-channel inputs. And alpha beta is a parameterization of how you uh, normalize the feature, normalize the, the image across channels. Okay, the next question we want to answer or at least explore is, um, can, um, do we really need those feature engineering? Do we really need this generalized which index? Can deep learning uh, basically come at uh, with batch norm do the same thing for us? Uh, so we did a like a toy example or uh, um, examination. Basically we tried to fit a two layer com net to learn uh, all those different kinds of vegetation index and uh, try to see if if that actually uh, can really quick learn how to uh, like extract the vegetation index, assuming vegetation index are important features would it have any vegetation related uh, any vegetation related tasks. So as we can say like half efficient chaining, there are still a lot of deviation from the ground truths. Like if you use batch normalization, so batch normalization is doing some normalization. You might assume it's it's, it's actually uh, helping to normalize as we, we did in the vegetation index that we saw. Uh, however, it didn't in this case. Um, it the the normalization we did is across channel, which is to some extent more like the group normalization or instant normalization in a deep learning world. So we propose this active. A group, a group normalization. So it's a linear combination uh, with a learnable parameter of group normalization and batch normalizations. As you can see, this additive group normalization help to extract the vegetation index features. Uh, in this case, help uh, learn to fit those vegetation index much faster um, and uh, with, with, with uh, much smaller mean L1 errors. Here, the L1 errors are denoted in the percentage, like five here is the 5% error, uh, L1 error, relative error. Okay, so this is our, uh, by plugging the gen generalized vegetation index and our ad additive ag uh, group normalizations, we do say the consistent uh, improvements from our baseline models. So as you can see, uh, if we plug in the vegetation index, there's some improvements over uh, double plant and uh, standing water and waterway and the weed clusters. 
if we use our uh, generalized weight distinction index, which you don't need to specify the form of uh, the, the formulation of weight distinction, definition of weight distinction index, um, it achieves uh, better results. And uh, especially it improves a lot on the double implant. And if we further use our active group normalization, we can see that actually is the best of the result of all the four experiments. And uh, uh, it improves a lot over the planter skip and the weed clusters. Okay, so in conclusion, we want to say like the generalized vegetation index, we have seen that enhance the model performance and uh, our additive group normalization further stabilize the training performance. Um, it's still, there's still a lot of work to do uh, because we are, we are just doing this. Uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are implementing the experiments. We are running the experiments over the agricultural vision data set only. Um, there are several uh, vegetation related detection classes in this data set, but we would love to see the result uh, over a more broader uh, list of tasks. And uh, we only uh, experiment that with um, that certain type of architecture, which is deep lab phase three, um, plus uh, efficient net in this case. And I think that concludes my presentation. And uh, thank you all.